Hi, my name is Cassandra Velasco, and I'm the Director of Children's Programming for the Women's Resource Center to End Domestic Violence. Right now, families in the midst of this pandemic are really struggling with at-home learning with their kids while staying in place. Globally, we're seeing kids showing all sorts of signs of stress and anxiety. I know that we've partnered with schools and local organizations to put out pamphlets for parents to start to identify what some of these stressors could look like in their kids. Maybe you're even beginning to see it in your own kids. Some signs of stress in kids can be stomach aches, headaches, lashing out, difficulty concentrating, withdrawing, changes in appetite, separation anxiety, and more. These signs are really exacerbated in the kids that I work with every day that have been affected by family violence. What we know about kids that have experienced trauma in their past is that when they enter into a situation or perceive kind of an environment to be stressful, that it can activate the limbic part of the brain, which then triggers what we call survival brain. And this sends out an automatic survival message or fight or flight to the nervous system. So basically these kids are stuck in this moment of reliving their trauma over and over again. Imagine trying to do your homework, trying to eat a peaceful dinner, trying to engage in anyone around you when your body and your mind is telling you that you're preparing for battle. I've seen so many kids that come to our safe house and because of their past traumas suffer from regression where they forget how to tie their shoes and other things that they knew before coming to the house. Sometimes they'll act out in anger or completely shut down. Sometimes they refuse to play or eat and they begin to even wet their bed or suffer from nightmares. But after just a small amount of time in the safe house and adjusting to the loving environment there, they begin to register that they are safe. And you see those same kids not only bounce back from those regressions, but also begin to thrive and show empathy and compassion for themselves and others. So yes, trauma and other adverse childhood experiences, such as family violence, can lead to not only these exacerbated signs of stress and anxiety, but can lead to negative behaviors, unhealthy relationships, and now is linked to medical health issues and long-term chronic illness. But we also know that with some love, compassion, and intention, we're able to rewire the brain and really build up resiliency in our kids. All of our children's programs at the Women's Resource Center are aimed at building resiliency in our kids. We want to give them the space to empathetically explore and learn how to cope with their past traumas in a healthy and positive way by giving them tools to identify their triggers, learn how they're feeling in their body and in their minds, and be able to communicate that, as well as promote self-regulation by giving them different calm down strategies and turning them into muscle memory. All of this goes into intervening in that survival brain process. If we can teach our kids to slow down rather than react to the survival brain, then what we're really teaching them is that they have a choice, that they have a choice to be active agents and in control of their lives. And hopefully that choice can lead to healthy relationships, positive behaviors, and a thriving, beautiful, successful life that breaks the cycles of violence rather than perpetuates them. Studies show it takes just one positive relationship with an adult to change a kid's life forever, but we know it takes a community to encourage and cultivate an entire generation to thrive. Please consider joining our community at the Women's Resource Center by giving financially to the children's program. We are dedicated to building resiliency in our kids by teaching them self-regulation, calm down strategies, navigating emotions, mindfulness, empathy, compassion, and other social emotional tools that promote peace education. Thank you.